right. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Locking Your Success Tra Successful Trader of the Month webinar uh, for September of 2015, even though it is now October. Just a little bit of background. Uh, Successful Trader of the Month is a program that Sherry and I came up with that is to reward and honor those traders who have put for, uh, put in the work and as a result are doing awesome with their trading. They receive a prestigious uh, Locking Your Success Successful Options Trader hat and receive an entry for a drawing to attend uh, one of our live events for free. Successful Trader of the Month is also for you, the aspiring trader or even the more educated trader, because by having those successful traders share their experience with you, you'll gain insightful uh, information and become inspired by knowing that it can be done, and you can make money trading and you can do well trading, and that there are many different paths to do so. A trader can qualify for Successful Trader of the Month in several ways. Uh, first would be to provide a trading plan and a recent trade that we will uh, evaluate. Second would be to stand out by helping uh, within the community. This might be through sharing useful information, providing guidance, or providing encouragement. And third might be if I notice somebody who breaks through a significant barrier or overcomes a challenge that they've been having then we'll maybe award it to them. Also, a fourth way might be for creativeness. In other words, someone who has successfully, successfully adapted their trading and their, to their unique personality, whether it be through one of my systems, someone else's, or even better, you know, maybe something that they even came up with on their own. So uh, before we get going into this, I quickly just run our disclaimer information to let you know that this is for educational purposes only. We're not broker dealers or financial advisors. We're not making any specific trade recommendations. Also, uh, be aware that the risk of options is substantial and make sure you're aware of all your risks prior to placing any trades. And these are uh, live trades with in the presentation. However, if something is simulated, it's believed to be as accurately represented as possible. So today, I'm speaking with the successful trader of the month. Jaroslav Valshek, I believe. <laughs> it was the best that I can do, and I'm sorry if I got that wrong. But uh, You're good at the end. All right. Well, Jaroslav was chosen because he submitted a trading plan that was interesting, well-documented, and it fit the environment that it was traded in. So good morning, Jaroslav. Good morning, John. Good morning. So, All right. Okay. So before we get to the trade, can, we tell, can you tell us a little bit about, about yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, as everybody can see, Yaroslav is a Czech name. So I'm born and bred at Czech Republic. <laughs> About 20 years ago, I came to far north Queensland, which is on the east coast of Australia on holiday, and I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely fell in love with this place, uh, which, is, which has a great prairie on one side and tropical rainforest on the other. <laughs> And if I fall in love with something, I I keep with that in my life. The same uh, the same principle applies to trading. I got involved with a market about ten years ago, and I don't see any signs of wanting to letting go. Also, I have a lovely wife and two beautiful little girls, aged four and eight, and at, in three weeks we are expecting another child. <laughs> oh, wow, so I'm not sure if it'll be girl or boy. <laughs> But if it's girl, I'll be toasted in a few more, few more years for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, this girl, it's hard. Oh, something about trading. Uh, I'm into all sorts of trading styles and strategies. Uh, besides of uh, options income trading style, I also manage a small currency portfolio uh, with focus on systematic approach. Uh, with all this intraday trading and order flow training and previous experiences, uh, it all somehow is influencing to a certain point my options neutral income trades today, which you will be able to see from this Argus explanation trade. Right. So, um, so are you, are you, so basically, you're saying that you've you've traded forex for a while, and you have some portfolios of forex. Yes, I, I still manage actively currency portfolio in the forex market, basically trying uh, major currencies and. And it's doing well, and I want to grow it into try to be able to try it in the options as well. It'll be even, even better. It's just working in progress right now. <laughs> Interesting. So how did you get into options? I got into options about two years ago. Then basically I started my trading about two and a half years ago. I got involved in, with SMB Forex Futures 
which is which is about learning how to correctly read the market. Okay. And then after that, I progress into. Uh, I, I then I have done the SMB the SMB program. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. the DNA DNA the SMB okay. DNA programs, and went to to Options uh, Foundation with Seth Fruberg. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Okay, so you went through their SMB, their DNA program, which which I, it was yeah. just, which is a very good program. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, 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 I did. Yeah, yeah. Mike oh. uh, Bill, Bill of Fury is a very good teacher, so <clears throat> that's fantastic. Yeah. And then you yeah. then you kind of got pushed through through uh, through the basics options program and stuff, and um, yeah. that's super yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, I'm practicing incremental adjustability for. What is considered to be a, a complex option, option strategy, which is wrong, basically, I do it on the uh, on a spy, right? Because it has the, the lower entry requirements, and yes, there's higher commissions, but that is the cost of that is the cost of practicing in a life environment. And, but I'm okay, I'm okay with that for now. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, and how how did you get into the the rock and the bearish butterfly trades? Because that seems like that's what you're doing, right? Uh, how I got into that? Basically, Seth. Uh, I was mentored by Seth, and I was quite confused. After all this training I had done with SMB, for and Futures, it was completely different style of trading. And Seth diligently navigated me from from systematical or what is called statistical trading into mm -hmm. Managing position by Greeks. Okay. And by the way, Seth has just made a blog on SMB uh, on SMB blog about these two strategies, and you should guys check it out. It's, it's very good. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. And and because of, I wasn't, I was always kind of leaning uh, trade by by market opinion and and the risk which is in the market. That what led me, basically, said navigate me towards towards the entry, uh, towards the rock, and and very butterfly, and that's basically how I got uh, towards you with these strategies because I'm I'm not confident uh, trying the statistical strategies by itself. I, I I'm right. the guy who fiddles with things. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. Yeah, so so that's super. So you've been. It sounds like you've been only been in options for about two years, and uh, but you've been yeah. in trading for a while. Um, yeah, basically the rock and entry. I about six months ago I got involved in in rock mm -hmm. uh, and entry about six months only. So it's it's fresh as flowers. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. So yeah. so it's it's good to hear that you're 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 doing well already and you and you have some uh, and you've actually adapted things as we'll see to to what your needs are which is very good yeah which yeah I'm, I'd like to see yeah. I'm, I like starting the dynamic op, uh, options approach Adopt, adopting adopting strategies into mar current market environment and, and just managing risk that way I'm comfortable well, doing that well, a really good thing about this is if you're used to directional trading, essentially you, there's only one circumstance where you're right. The price has to go in your direction. The good part about options neutral trading is you have a lot of different situations under which you'll do well. And if you can adapt your um, market neutral trading or your high probability trading with a little bit of directional knowledge, you can do extremely yeah. well. You can do extremely yeah. well. So, so that's that. That's, that's, what's the M twenty one? Isn't it? That's what you do, guys. In M twenty one. M twenty one, right? Yeah, that's the M twenty one type yeah. of stuff. Where we, we we take a look at the market, and I show you my way to look at the market. But um, you know, someone who's with your background, you might have your own way of looking at the market, and that's perfectly fine. Yeah. But the, all the concepts well, are the same. Yeah. Well, I have a funny story about uh, the SMB. Forex Futures, this is a very advanced running course um, which has been done by SMB. I don't know if it's available, but I might have something else now. Mm -hmm. But um, we went to these uh, chat rooms with the guys which were speaking Spanish. Okay. And we couldn't, <laughs> we couldn't understand each other. We, we tried to communicate, we could not understand each other. But he tried to, through the chat room, he tried to uh, 
say something and I try to figure out what was it because it makes no sense and I try to set up any Spanish. Anyway, it didn't take long. He, he typed mm -hmm. this sentence and he said, many traders try to predict the market and hope that price will follow. Good traders understand the language of the market and act accordingly. Ah. And it was so beautiful. I copy it. It is sticking on. I could stick on my wall here. Every time I try, this is his. It has his name. I don't. It is his. His name is Andres Hernandez. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because we're talking about language. The market is basically speaking a language. We couldn't understand each other, but we understand both. When we look at the technical levels, we look at um, the order right. flow. We look at the key levels, and we knew we knew what's happening. We could right. Know. And that's an artistry. That's an artistry that that people should strive to develop is just understanding yeah. the language and the flow of the market. It's not. Yeah. It's not as scientific as, you know, we get a lot of people who are engineers and and so forth uh, or, or whatever who come into this to, into yeah. this business and they try to hit everything with all these really technical numbers and stuff, but it really doesn't work that way. It's, uh, yeah. it's it's got an ebb and flow and a certain uh, language yeah. and artistry to it, and that's what I was struggling a little bit when when I did the SMB, uh, the foundation. Those strategies were statistic, uh, um, they had st statistical advantage or edge. Mm -hmm. I just I just couldn't figure out how to approach it. It was quite confusing, and uh, thank you, thanks to said he he was pushing me towards you, and uh, and that's where I am. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's learning, learning M3 and, and rock. Yeah, I'm still learning. I'm, I'm, I'm in practice mode. So I think I think we're all still learning. So yeah. <laughs> well, the market has a lot of lessons to teach us, and we'll learn them for a very long time. Uh, probably for as long as you're in them. So um, yeah, no, this is. This is I think great. that's normal. Now, do you have do you f trade full time, or do you have another job? No, I I come here, and. I don't like work for anybody else, so <laughs> I create my own job. I'm I'm on my own boss. Um, I've got business here. It's agriculture. I have agriculture services around here. Okay, so, so you run you run an agricultural services business. Yeah. So I'm self I'm self employed, and basically trading at night and when the kids are sleeping, so I got peace and. <laughs> Right. Well, that's easier for you because your job is not at the same time that your trading is, right? But it's but that's it makes right. for, but it makes for a very long day. <laughs> it is a very long day. It's very hard. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess sometimes yeah, very tired, but no, I'm I'm driven. I absolutely love doing it. And yeah, that's good. That's good. I mean, we should do our stuff. Working that way. Right. Yeah, it's should, working. For me. Yeah. We should do things because we love them for sure. Yeah. So you want to talk about the trade a little bit? Yeah, I've got. Um, I've got a presentation. If okay. Um, before we get into the presentation, is it okay if I just show a couple of things? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to show you something that Jaroslav sent, in, and I just want to comment on a couple of things. And this is a form that's on the website, if you guys don't know. It's a trade plan, critical elements. And if you want to enter your trading plan in, I it would be good if you filled this thing out. Um, basically, it, it gives us just some critical things about the trade. So here is trade plan critical elements. He did a uh, a modified rock uh, plan, which is calling a new market neutral strategy with directional bias, right? So there's the name, 30 days expiration on the spy. This is a small trade, total risk of five thousand uh, dollars, expected maximum loss, right? So if you look in, at our, any of our advanced programs, we have an expected maximum loss, which is essentially what most people call maximum loss. And then we have what an absolute maximum loss, which is uh, something that is a number that you're not likely to exceed if the market makes a thir makes a, a, a fairly normal, a large but fairly normal movement. So in other words, you know, say I was in a trade on the Russell and I was down and I had a 10% maximum loss and I was down 8%. It wouldn't be abnormal or too out of the ordinary for the Russell to move to gap 30 points overnight, right? So I would say, okay, I'm down 8%. I'm not at my maximum loss, but if I have a 30 point move, I'm down below, I'm definitely going to be down below my maximum loss. But, um, but since a 30 point move is probable, what's my loss number going to look like if I get that 30 point move? And if it's more than my absolute maximum loss, 
then I pull out of the trade or I adjust the trade or I do something to make sure that that doesn't happen. So that's another cause for an adjustment within um, within our trades. And we do that at the more advanced levels if you guys haven't been there yet. The um, expected profit is 10 to 15%. So one thing I really like about a trading plan in general uh, for a market neutral plan is when you have a profit target that's it's, that's at least as good as your maximum loss. In this case, this is actually better than its maximum loss, which is excellent. Um, if you can make the numbers work out, sometimes if you don't let your maximum loss come down far enough, it starts, it starts affecting your win-loss ratio, and you don't want to make it that tight. But to be able to, if you can have a runnable trade with, with um, a good win-loss ratio with an expected profit higher than your maximum loss, that's always a good thing. Um, I don't know what this is, acceptable maximum loss 20 to 100 percent. What's that mean, Jaroslav? <laughs> I, uh, I was okay because it's a practice uh, account. I was pre prepared to lose the whole. I would, of course, I wouldn't let it happen that way, but basically okay. it says if I lose the entire, entire uh, the trade, like, that's okay. Okay, right. So, so you're saying if you were trading larger, your absolute maximum loss would be 20%. But yes, since, yes, you're, yes. since you're trading so small, you're going to allow it to go past that, and just for, for the purposes of learning. Is that? Yeah, uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, pass the text ten percent. But if there's a event which I can't control, the ten percent, like completely melt over in a, in, a, in the market, and I lose everything, uh, it's okay. Right. Right. So, in effect, when you're doing this, right, because you're still kind of in the practicing phase a little bit, so when you're doing this, if you do lose more than 20%, you probably want to make sure you make a note of that in your log so that you understand that this trade wouldn't have worked out had I been doing it live because I wouldn't have taken that kind of risk. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's just one thing. So um, when to enter, right, then we had, he has <clears throat> how to enter in an adjustment plan, which are very vague here. Realistically, at some point, they should be and again, you wouldn't necessarily put that here uh, in this particular form, but somewhere in the background, you should have a fairly detailed adjustment strategy that you have, an entering strategy, and also uh, exit criteria uh, is good, a disaster plan. And this, everybody should have a, should be aware that you can lose 100% of what you have in your trade. It's very, very, very unlikely that it'll happen if you're following the plans and you're and you're being and you're not doing something that you shouldn't be doing, right? Um, but it, but it's possible to lose the entire amount of capital, and you need to think about what am I going to do if that happens? If 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 that would wipe you out and make it so that you couldn't trade anymore, then you're not properly budgeting your money or and you're not properly sizing your trades right so so that's very important and in this year he realizes that hey what's the worst that can happen well I, I basically I lose all my money and in this case if I lose all my money it's I understand that that can't happen um, it's not going to stop me from trading I still have enough money in the background to come in and refund my account keep going so that is perfect I love that so I just wa wanted to make those comments and that's all. That's that's pretty much what I have with that. Now, Jaroslav is going to go through the trade. And do you want me to just give you control? Yes. Okay. okay. I can do that. I can give you control, and then you can show your screen. Um, do we see anything? We see uh, some flowers. Oh, great! <laughs> I have to move everything over then. <laughs> <laughs> you can pick a different screen if you'd like. Yeah, I just did. I think so. Never mind. What will I do? John, if, is, is it okay if before I put the presentation on to, to go through some strategy guides I have? Oh yes, that would be great. Okay, so this is my strategy guides. Um, this is basically part of my trading plan. And basically I start everything uh, it, it, uh, by identifying risk. So I'm always looking at market risk, uh, the position itself, uh, carries risk, so what, what type of risk it is, and also looking at uh, pricing risk, 
No, what kind, what kind of risk I am taking on, it will depend uh, how I see the trades. Uh, basically, arising awareness what what I'm trying to do or what kind of trader I am. So basically, if taking on risk, I want to see how much I risk I'm taking on, when I'm going to pass on somebody else, and how to eliminate risk. So I always start reminding myself what options basically are supposed to do. Options are hedges instrument, and it's meant to be for hedging. So basically, it's all about passing risk um, onto somebody else or deal with dealing with that. So I always start in this identified market structure, this custom built filters which I have, and it's a go and the goal is to capture what is happening in real time. Uh, basically, I measure ranges and its width. Uh, I don't know when the range is either expanding or shrinking or moving to a different uh, variable. Also, it tells me, my filters tell me when the range is not valid anymore and basically measures that trend and its strength. Okay, so does that mean that you're, you're basically looking at <clears throat> how far the, the, the market's moving up and down in a certain time period? and whether it's actually yeah, gaining in value or, or, or losing in value over, overall? Yeah, yeah. if it's trending, uh, I, for example, I respect that and I, I probably wouldn't have bearish butterfly in that, env in that environment. For bearish butterfly, I like to see well-defined ranges. Okay, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if you, you, so, if you trade a bearish butterfly, you want basically a sideways trend. Or yes, yes. Or, or, or somewhere I can identify it, so I can identify uh, some kind of structure I can, I can base my risk against. So if it's, the structure is not valid anymore, I know when to get air up or when to basically switch the position on something else. Okay, super. This is the uh, this is nine trade accordingly to market conditions. So also when I do plan, my trading plan, I always think about ahead. Okay, now, do, I, do, do, do any M3 or do I do Butterfly? I'm trying to have a sequence plan. Nice. Okay, That's so this is kind of M21 type stuff. Did you take the M21 course or did you come up with this all your, on your own? I have not done 21. I, I don't know what 21 is. I know this including uh, some directional trading. Oh, fantastic. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is, yes. just so that you know, this, this is essentially the concept behind M21 is, 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 is finding these things out and doing this. So you've come up with it on your own. That's awesome. And, and oh. as a directional trader probably would. So. Yeah. But it, it needs to make sense. Uh, everything, you know, you, basically you can start with M, M3 or, or even if you're a butterfly and the conditions aren't favorable, you can go to M3 for a little bit and then go back into bearish butterfly a little bit lighter and the times more or when times are passing away uh, from the expiration or when the conditions are better. Anyway, this is just an example. Uh, yeah, I love what it. I'm looking at. Yeah. It's great. So I also, when I do strategy, I design an overlapping strategy against that because sometimes it's easy to find hedging opportunities between the strategies itself. Mm -hmm. It's the diversifying direction of opinion. So on Master G, I can have a little bit, I can carry a little bit more positive delta if I know the other strategy is covering up. For example, if I'm losing money on, on Master on strategy one, I want to make sure the money I'm losing, I want to at least make or even more on strategy two, vice versa. So basically swapping these strategies, uh, trading the strategies against each other. Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah. yeah to trade initiation styles. I have, from, of course, from backtesting, the entry uh, has proved to be the most efficient entry into the market. So I do basic entry, entry directional. That means this is the basically entry, it's like being on a, right. like you have 50, 50 delta, and it's just before you roll in, you know, it could be good for, for, for uh, uptrending markets like back and find good support, back and see good water flow, uh, let the buyers are stepping in, I probably would start entry with 50 or even 60 deltas. 
Right. Um, right. Then so on, then put, put, put a little bit of directional delta bias on yeah. it so that you can uh, yeah. Yeah. take advantage of it. Sure. Okay. And then I would enter the classic rock. And I have modified rock. This is basically what you will see in this presentation. Or berry butterfly if there's some uh, resistance nearby or selling conditions or some structure in the market. Mm -hmm. Rock C, uh, that's, uh, that's a combination from rock. For example, the rock has M3R, M3 unhedged, uh, it has, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, well, rock, rock half hold back. Yeah, cat, cat, yeah, cat yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Basically, any, there's another way to enter the market is basically from any of these uh, combinations and go from there to develop the trade into rock or, or something else. And I have also Zorba, this is my personal one. It's basically very wide butterfly, very wide, and I just basically, this is when the ranges are well defined and I want my gamma trend to move very fast into the expression trend, I would tend to use very wide butterflies. Okay, yeah, that's, that's good too, sure. Yeah. Nice. I also have chicken points. This is part of my training plan. I call it passive adjustments, active adjustments, uh, dynamic approach. Basically, you can read it. Basically, it's all about uh, dynamic approach into regulating position. It, because position is changing as time goes. For the dynamic approach, are you, does that refer to something like, hey, um, you know, I started out in this position here, but if the market moves a certain way, then that gives me an opportunity to maybe adjust into something different. Yes, and also okay. time comes to play a big role in it. For example, I can, I can have a planned sequence of trades, and if time passes by, and it's, sometimes it's not practical to get of one configuration to, to the other, it's, it's probably better to swap it or change it or do something else because of the time of, of all the pricing of the options. So that's what I call the dynamic approach. Right. So if you enter a bearish butterfly and the market doesn't move for three weeks, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, you might want to be you might want to be in something else by three weeks because now you now you now you no longer have the range if the market takes off that you used to, right? So now yeah, maybe you go into some some of something else. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. And but also the filters will tell you that the filters I have uh, are dynamic as well. So as time goes and price movement uh, is changing, and the underlying, the calculations are different. So I can play for different type of ranges uh, as well. So okay. This is the nice. flexibility of my. Okay. Uh, of course, when I finish my trade, I, I want to know why I did it, how I did it, what are the market conditions, what the risk. Uh, Except, except expecting or accepting uh, what, is the, what is the risk management, what is my reason for entry and also reason for adjustment. There's also, there's, we're probably learning about one type of adjustment, but the same adjustment can be done um, five or even more ways, achieve the same thing, just just shifting the strikes slightly, slightly differently. Right. Like to evidence supporting trades and yeah. So this is basically my trading plan, more complex, non, uh, more a little bit more in details. Sure. Uh, yeah. Because everything's the entry, uh, it's very easy, but there are, could be a little bit uh, hard to remember. So I, I got all all guidance, everything. This is part of my plan to, to basically know how to navigate if I get stuck somewhere. Uh, this is this is the guide I'm using. That's great. So you have the, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So you have a very dynamic trading plan where you're willing to yes. do one of these configurations, and when you're in different configurations, you have basic guidelines for each configuration you're in, right? And you can yes. probably click on those and come up with them. So that's super. Yeah. And also compare what would be the, the appropriate or what is the guidance, and compare against my idea and see how, how is it uh, right right you, you basically you, get a nice. feel for if, if I'm always looking for some type of advantage in pricing or, or somewhere because yeah always look for advantage in some right way. and if you look for it, get upper hand 
Yeah. If you look yeah. for it, a lot of times you find it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. So, yeah, the flowers got gone and got leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I put the presentation here, so. And I would appreciate your comments on this, uh, on this what I call customized rock trade. Yes? Customized rock trade. Go ahead. Yep, there is a question, though, maybe before we go on. Um, yep. Yep. Could you please elaborate more on the differences between active adjustment and dynamic adjustment? Yeah, sure. Dynamic adjustment and active adjustment basically is, is the basically the same thing. Because what I call passive adjustment and active adjustment, active, active adjustment if I'm playing for something, if I see some advantage in the market I can take advantage of, if I see buyers stepping in I probably push a little bit more delta ahead than normally. Uh, active adjustment is also doing nothing. If I have, say so, I'm supposed to be adjusting at 250 deltas, and I decide not to adjust. Even if I do nothing, I call it as an active adjustment as well because I'm making the conscious decision. Okay, so you decide. so you have a basic set of. Let me see if I can if I get this straight. I don't know. So what you're saying is, you know, I have this trade plan with a basic set of adjustments that says, you know, maybe at minus 100 delta adjust or minus or plus 100 yeah. delta adjust. But you're saying if you see something in the charting that is, or in the market cycle or whatever that's going to um, maybe say that the market's going to turn around or whatever that you'll, you'll maybe no, do nothing. Or if you see something in the charting that looks like maybe yes. the market's going to keep going and break out out of the range that you initially thought that you're going to yeah. make an adjustment for that ahead of time, more actively. That's right. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay, super. Yeah, and even sometimes it's funny, there's no adjustment, but, but I write it down as an active adjustment as an active adjustment because I was playing for certain for certain play in the market. Right, right. So it's it's yeah. basically adjusting from a market a completely market neutral person's approach, and adding in some of your market bias into the um, approach. Yeah. And also I've split up adjustments. Um, sometimes I call it static a static adjustment, but the market has upper hand on me, and basically I just need to shift the position to accommodate the risk. There's there's very rarely. Uh, the active adjustments, that I'm, what I'm playing for, most of it is basically I need to respect the market. But at the active adjustment is if I only can see certain certain pricing or certain development happening in the market. That's that's all. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, one way I might actively adjust is I, a lot of times I won't pick direction, but what I do know from being a directional trader in the past and, and training directional traders is that when the market comes up to a resistance point, for example, I don't know which way it's going to go, but I do know it's going to move a lot. So if I have an adjustment, yeah. if, I, if I'm in a trade and I notice I have an adjustment point at a resistance point, you know, I might make an adjustment so that I don't have to adjust at the resistance point so I can let the market work itself out, right? And then once yeah. it chooses a direction, I can you know, I can go from there. So that would be a yeah. break from my normal guidelines to deal with the fact that I'm going to have a lot of volatility in a certain range. I don't know. Yeah. 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 And there's there's then one more question. follow up question. Yep. There's one more follow up question. Are there conflicts to trading discipline if one follows an active or dynamic approach? There can be. Uh, you need to be always aware what you plan for. Because once you're aware, it, it, has, it needs to make sense, and you need to be prepared to reverse the positions to the right uh, configuration. If, if you're wrong, you need to be disciplined. With that. Yeah, I, I think I think part of it, Jaroslav, too, is it, it, is you have to be willing to reverse out of your trade. Because a lot of times, yes. people will make a decision. They'll say, you know, I think the market's going to go up, and they'll and they'll do this would make a move or whatever and then the market doesn't go up or, or, or it just proves that it's not going to happen right and then they're unwilling to back out of that is that is that what you're saying right yeah. right and that can cause problems if you don't follow the yeah. discipline and, and you know when you, yeah. you need, one thing about a directional trader is they change their mind very very quickly 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> right. Well, well I'm just saying, a directional trader will do that. See, where an income trader will say, no, this has to happen. And they'll, they'll wait it out yeah. and they'll wait it out. You know, yeah. you know, a directional trader will be on if then ladder. If this happens, then that yeah. means that. But if this happens afterwards, that means something else. Yeah. And they'll change yeah. their mind instantly and they're very rapid to do so. Uh, and they're not yeah. going to worry about, you know, that I paid or I lost a little bit of money on this adjustment. They're just going to do what needs to be done and get the job done. And I think yeah. that's probably the type of trader you are. You just get the yeah. job done. <laughs> yeah, and you need to be careful to do it only on key levels or significant levels where you can see the flow, like the volume and stuff like that, because if you start doing this adjusting in the middle of nowhere, you get chipped out. Right. You need to be, you need to be key levels only. Right, right. You have to have some sort of system system in place that, that you can, that yes. you can uh, evaluate. Yeah, exactly. Yes. All right. Is, is there any more question there, Cherry? That's all we have for now. Thank you. Okay. So here's the customer, customer stock trade. Here's three statistics. The customer stock trade has been uh, August 2015 expiration. As, as from previous slide, you could see the plan capital of 5,000, maximum, maximum loss uh, 500, target profit was 750, the underlying was spy. Uh, when I enter, enter position, the, the initial capital was 3,790. Uh, trade entry on July 22nd. Exit uh, August 21st. It was 30 day to expiration. Yes, and SPY, so a lot of commission there. Okay, I don't mind, but it's okay. Right. It's learning fresh line. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, it, it, and and this, is, this is one thing that I tell people too, is if you're going to train in SPY or IWM, I mean, you can certainly do that, but one of the things you have to realize is that your commission is going to be very high relative yeah. to your profit and loss, yeah. and yeah. sometimes if you break even, you would have won if you were in Russell, and you have to understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So go on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the SPY, this is basic tech conditions. You can see uh, how it was moving. It was 2010. In nine days later, we were in 2.4, so that's $6. Nine days Lidar again, uh, even a lot higher, 213, five days later, 206, and so forth. So it was very choppy and volatile market. Right, those are big moves for the SPY. Yeah, yeah. So basically this is the day I put it on. So the SPY identified the long term, it was intact, it was very strong at the time. Uh, we were trying to break or testing at least uh, all-time highs, especially on July 22, maybe starts coming down. So I put a trade on, on this day. Uh, I identified a medium term on my four-hour charts. Uh, th this range, uh, which has been formed from mid-February to late July, and defined support 205 with resistance to 13. So basically, I was playing for this range. Right, and and and, and, and I, I like how, I like how you are aware of. Right, you don't you don't necessarily have to play for that range, but you're very aware yeah. of the range of the market. Yeah. So right. I, I want to plan strategy which would which would basically cover this range, and mm. uh, if we break out and have this volume and confirmation, I, I need I know that the strategy I need to do something right. Right, right. Once you know you break the range, and that's it, then you yeah. can try and define your new range. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Some, sometimes you can get pop out, but if there's no volume, you know, you'll do nothing because usually that's mean the price has not been accepted and usually it reverses back to the mean. But if there's a significant volume and, and a follow-up through, you want to be quick. You don't want to just wait because some type of adjustment is not fulfilled yet. You want to act quickly in this time. Right. But when you set up so, your trade, you set yourself up so you actually didn't have to do an adjustment there, which I noticed. I yes. Don't you, I don't yes, know if you did that on purpose I, or not, but but, yeah. but I noticed that, yeah. right? Yes, I did. Yeah. Well, I respected the long time, the long uh, trend, the long uh, long time time frame. So if we break out, I just I will be just rolling uh, entry style position. Right. So basically, this is the reason why I have flat line because I had no market opinion. I, I, I didn't know if you're going to break down or if you're going to break up. 
a static neutral. That's what I look at, T plus zero line, I want to have a... Right. If I so don't play anything, as flat as possible. If I play for something, I'll probably lift up bullishly or bearishly, depending depending on where I am. Right, right. Now, you um, you actually put your call out of the money, is that correct? Because it's a modified rock? Yeah, but I was, yeah, I was bullish a little bit. So I was playing that if the market moves higher, I'll sell the premiums, basically right. scale into my, my right. so, butterflies, basically build up the better price. Right. It's fine. It, it's fine to use an out of the money call. Okay. And I'm just just going to comment. On this. It's fine to use an out of the money call if you understand your T plus zero line is going to collapse on you if you get a slow move. Right. Mm -hmm. So. In your situation, you're kind of thinking, hey, I think the market's coming down because I have this resistance area. But I think the market, if it, but, but you're also aware that if the market breaks out, it's probably going to really break out. Yeah. Right. So you have the out of the money call, which is going to protect you if you get a really strong breakout. It's not going to protect you if you get a grind up, but it's going to protect you if you get a really strong breakout. But it's not going to hurt you if the market comes down. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so. To, to me, and this is one of the things I look at when we kind of review the trade, is you know what's what's he thinking, and and I think you're set up very well for either of those scenarios, right? So so that's one of the reasons I really like this trade. Yeah. So basically, this is the modified rock. Uh, so the, the expression is covering the range which I have in, identified on a medium time frame, which was the 213 and 205, basically. That's what I want to have my tent expression in. Okay. And plan. It's the T plus zero line. Accordingly, betting what's going to happen. Great. Okay, so, so anyway, but until here, we went straight down. So it was definitely strong resistance in, at this level, and it, it was a very fast move for me. I put the position, basically. You know, the position handled it very well because of the flat T plus zero line. Mm -hmm. So as market was appro approaching support zone, uh, I had about 100 delta. Okay. And I was, uh, I was uh, actually contemplating to, to, to reduce some of it or control the downside risk uh, if the market was uh, trading towards the end of the day at this level. Because if it's try if it dies there, that's mean the market is a bit weaker. There's no bias, so I, I want to have slightly reduced okay. um, my, my delta. Okay. But it was not needed. Okay, so, so, you, here's decided, the, so you decided not yeah. to do it. Okay. Well, here's my plan. It was my plan adjustment. That's basically I want to remove um, embedded pool, pool vertical I did have, in, in embedded in the butterfly, basically slightly scale it in, not completely, because I want to re reduce delta only only, only a little bit, because basically we were on a support, I still want to have positive delta, I didn't want, but I did probably didn't want to have too much. Okay. So this was, this, this was the plan, but it did not materialize, the, the market has actually uh, rejected the level and, and straight up. So nothing was happening there with the position this time. I noticed this strong buying about 210 on the market and, and, and the, uh, there was some collapse in IV volatility. The market basically was planned for breaking out. Uh, I started aggressive, aggressively just in the deltas. Mm -hmm. So this IV crash and negative delta has increased more than um, basically this T, plus, T, uh, T plus zero line has collapsed for me. And as I think, as you said earlier, because the outside, uh, the out of the money calls basically collapsed. Right, right. Which, which, yeah, which yeah. Is, is to be expected, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so actually, can you, can you, uh, if you go to slideshow, can you make that full size? Is that okay? Or is that not going to work? I don't, I don't know how to do it. Go to slideshow, see on the very top. On the very top of it. Can you see, can you see this? Uh, uh, I have some notes down there here. Can you see the notes here? Oh, you tr are you trying to show the notes too? All right. If you're trying to show the notes too, why don't we just leave it here then? Yeah. It just keep. I uh, just some. I have some notes. 
so I, so I know okay. what I was doing. Okay, no, okay, super. We'll 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 run it this way then. You know what? I can make it maybe a little bit, a little better. Yeah, it's a little better. We'll just have to. We'll do the best we can. There you go. Yeah, it popped up a little bigger. So, so here I was adding positive delta by removing the one extra item and input I have to thirteen. Mm -hmm. So because the IV has, I don't know what's the number there. There was something like ten. Uh, you are here, ten point nine, but the volatility declined by eight percent on the day to ten point nine, and pricing suggesting that the market was ready to test all-time highs. At least that's what it seems to me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to carry too much negative deltas. I think it, the adjustment was a little bit too aggressive, aggressive, than, than I intended, but that's what I did at the time. Sure. Yeah. And I was wrong. Yeah, you took, your bullish, you, pushed, you took your bullish yeah. bias and came back down again. Yeah. <laughs> I took my bullish bias and got slammed. <laughs> <laughs> and that happens sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly the price got choppy and IV increased to 15.42 in a couple of days. And here we go. I was saying, what the <laughs> <laughs> So August 13, here I am. Big, I was okay and a big, big slide down. So, 13 August, large sell-off, except maximum plus 250 delta. Market a key support level and plan is to adjust by rolling put, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, adjust by rolling down, put side butterfly if market breaks that support, or maximum delta is uh, staying above 250 the rest of the end of the day. Basically, I did nothing here. I was just watching the support, watching the price action, watching the order flow, see if there's buy stepping in. How serious the sellers are. Okay. Basically, praying. <laughs> so you were you were willing to lose if the market went down from here. Yeah, I was I was I wasn't paying attention on my delta. I, I, I was I was aware of that. I was mindful, but the support was still intact, and I didn't want to get aggressively adjust to the downside and get the dip so It's basically well. A, yeah, at some point, you know, you guys with directional trades, at some point it's often beneficial to say, you know what, I'm willing to lose if the market, if the market continues to go down in order to make a very nice profit if the market actually does what it's probably going to do, you know, if you're taking in some directional biases. And, and, and I don't see necessarily see a problem with that. You know, some people get into these trades and they say, you know what, I have to win something no matter what. And yeah. Realistically, from a long-term basis, that actually brings your returns down. Um, you might win more often, you might uh, or lose less often, but you're also going to actually, it may, and that may not even happen. But a lot of the times, by saying, you know what, I'm willing to move, lose if the market continues down, hits my loss numbers, uh, but I'm going to wait it out. And sometimes, and a lot of times, that's very beneficial. Uh, that's all. N21, John, what's, what's the plan for N21 in, in this environment? Well, the thing is, you, you, in M21, you're going to be making a custom trade plan for every trade, right? Oh, so, okay. so, so if, if, if essentially before you got into the trade, you would decide that if the market goes to this level, you're out and you take a okay. loss. If, if it breaks, like, like I mean, if it breaks the support or something, you just get out, right? Uh, yeah, right. I mean, that's of course that's the, that's the choice of the designer of the trade. I mean, personally, I allow it to break support a certain amount before I do it because a lot of times you have that, you know, a lot of times you'll push yeah. through the support level right. and come right back, right? So I, I, I give it a reasonable amount uh, to do that. But um, but you know, but I if I'm in a range, I may have I may have done this, and if I had to happen to break the range and continue down, I just take my loss and move on. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. so yeah, because the delta to the end of the day still was remaining still high. Uh, I, I was planning that this price was too aggressive for me. This 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 the, the, um, it was very big die range um, to move the price that far. So basically, I was thinking, what's my next step if if I get back uh, to the support? I want to start building butterflies a little bit, little bit back. So I tried to shift my butterflies uh, a little bit down, but 
I was not able to buy butterfly on a put side, so I, I don't on a call side there, which is, uh, I think, the next slide. Yeah, okay. So this was my plan. Basically, I, I created this plan to prepare myself for right. a Figuna retest. For to, bigger to support range. again. Yeah. So as I, I got some note here, I have been considering to give positions more room to the downside given the recent volatility by moving and repositioning butterflies. But as last week expression was approaching and price action stabilized, I did not do it. Okay. So basically I have only a couple of days, like eight days of expiration at this day, at this point. Mm -hmm. So this was plan which I did not do again. Okay, so you yeah, so you thought about doing that, but you didn't do it. Yeah, yeah, it was just just in the in the preparation mode. Okay. So um, it was approaching the last uh, big of expression. I started, and I think I was a little on here. Um, I tried to reduce gamma because I want I didn't want to have to. Mm -hmm. The movement risk, but with the expiration, John, would you rather keep the gamma to push you towards the center of the, of the, of the tent, or especially when you're in the center? I like, to, reduce? I like to pull my gamma down towards towards expiration if I can, if I can do it efficiently, yeah. 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 Would you do it even if you're a little bit outside of the tent? You mean, would I, would I have done anything yeah. here necessarily? Um, like, but yeah. I mean, would you scalp gamma if you are definitely close to the center of your butterfly, or would you do it even if you are on a on a sides, to reducing gamma? I well, on the sides you kind of have to deal with your delta. Yeah. Right. So I would try and deal with my delta in a way that would reduce my gamma, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, I mean, you're doing it in the center, and what what do you do? Pull yeah. butterflies out, basically. Yeah, I just bought. Yeah, yeah I bought this one up, and basically right. it's, it's a box which is um, right. right. So, so, so it's like pulling out a condor or pulling out a butterfly out of the position. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Um, I mean, not exactly, but close to that. And uh, yeah, and it reduces gamma, so that's perfectly fine. And. If, you know, as you come into expiration, if you get a really, really big move in one day, it can really wipe you out. So you have to be you have to be aware of that. And um, I think it's a it's a good idea to reduce gamma if you can. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure. When I was at the beginning this trade, I was thinking like, should I leave it on, get a maximum gamma to just push me a little bit higher? Yeah. Just to reduce the risk. Yeah, it's, it's plus, there's pluses and minus, you know, you're taking on directional risk for doing that. So if you're not, I, I guess one of the ways you need to look at it is this way, is, is you need to look at your position and you say, how much money am I going, how much money am I willing to lose with a normal move? Right, so okay. it's not, it's really, it's really normal, like if I had an ATR on the SPY of $2, right, ATR I mean, an average true range of $2, that means I can expect at least a $2 move on any given day. And if I if I have to adjust every time I have an average move, then that's usually you get chopped out of the position, yeah. right? Okay. So so I would make it so I didn't have to adjust on an average move, and okay. I would do that by reducing my gamma. If, okay. if that if that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, it does. Thank you. So here is my projection for the next um, couple of days. I was contemplating to take the trade off, but. Uh, a project, a uh, sudden deviation move into next uh, day, I think it was on Friday, if I'm right, yep. So if I said if I stay over weekend, or even Monday, basically, I should be fine. It was, this is, it was, that was the plan. So this was the reason why I started in the trade. Mm -hmm. And I got wrong. Uh, the position actually got very um, volatile again. I got shook down. And the EV was increasing as well, so it wasn't the best choice. The best choice probably would be to close the trade earlier, but I didn't know that. So, of course, so. so I decided to scale in out of position, basically to just peel it off. This, this market was moving uh, directionally. Right. I had to move forward the risk. 
completely and basically uh, played like I have a lottery ticket here, you know, which which I should have kept because the start snail was very hard at the time and I managed to uh, pull some more but yeah, that's how I basically got out. Remove all the risk and have to, had some lottery ticket and Right. Yeah. It, it, and again, if you're willing to risk, or if you're if you're if you're perfectly willing to lose the amount of money that you have between your actual profit and loss and your expiration profit and loss, yeah, you could make a lot more here. Yeah. But if, you're, yeah. if you're not willing to risk that money, then you're then you're then you're just, you know, you're then that's what you have. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. go. That's what you got. It was, it was a good trade. It was a good trade. We, I enjoyed that. Okay. Thank you, John. And that's the last slide for this trade. We do have another question. Um, yeah. Is there any specific reason that you use Option Net Explorer instead of Option View for your options analytics? Uh, I, I use both. Uh, basically, my broker is TradeMonster, and I'm downloading my live trades into one Option Net because I can't do it into Option View. And it happens to me in June or July that I didn't do it, and I was managing position which I didn't have. So, ah, right. I, so I start I start doing basically every time I uh, I enter a live trade, I I immediately put it into option net because yeah I put on a position and then I forget exactly how I did it and I was looking something else and I have uh, position you know. Most completely different, so that's big. Uh, and that's a big mess. point too. Like you, you guys can't use Thinkorswim in Australia, right? If I remember yeah, right. No. Right. No. So, so Thinkorswim's a, a broker that has analytical tools, and he's you kind of using like this, like you would use the Thinkorswim analytical tools, which is the same way that I use them. Is that you know I can actually see what my position is here and make sure that it's right. You know, one of the big problems, and this happens to me. You know, in the trade desk, we trade on LiveVol platform, which doesn't have crap for analytics, and we have to put everything into option view to look at it. And yeah, you'll you'll have positions that you might have a position that's different. You don't notice it until your profit and loss gets way off. You know, how come yeah. option view is showing me this, and and I should be up money or whatever? Um, and and that will happen. So this is very useful for that. So that's that's, that's really yeah. great to eliminate mistakes. Yeah. Anyway, I'll look at the option view at the, at the T plus zero line with the, with the settings as John is recommending for entry to control my T plus zero line. And also this option that has black shoe uh, pricing model as default. So I also check in the grades on this one because this kind of I comparing this two. This is basically more price price model oriented rather than option view is more predictive. So basically if I see big uh, big discrepancies between those two I buy extra attention actually trying to find out what is happening. So basically it's just uh, chicken uh, chicken thing. Plus if option view doesn't work at least I have option option net and if option net doesn't work at least I have uh, nice option view. Backup. So nice backup. Yeah that's nice. Yeah Perfect. nice backup. Yeah. We'll keep up with everything. Very nice. Yeah. So good ways, good ways to do that. Also. All right. That's um, that was an awesome presentation, Haroslav. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great. We appreciate that. Is, is, uh, it doesn't look like there's any more questions, right? So. No, but there is. Uh, Gail says excellent job because it was that was outstanding. That was that was oh, great. Thank, thank you, Haroslav. Yeah, lots of learning, lots of learning there, and, and um, I appreciate you coming on and, and, and putting the presentation together. Lots of lots of work with that. Well, thank you for having me, John and, and Sherry. That was, was awesome to be here. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, and um, again, thank you, Yaroslav, for the great presentation. And we will see you on Monday morning. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye -bye. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Bye.